another week, boys, and another twab. This week at Bungie, we've got sparrows. We've got PvP updates. We've got spoops with Fest for the Loss. We've got good vibes, and we're ready to rock with the latest this week in Destiny. Before jumping into this week's topics, let's take a quick look back at what we went over last week. Topics covered last week include exotic focusing and other economy changes, season 22 mid-season update preview, Deck of Whispers developer insight article recap, and update on the Destiny 2 cutscenes archival project. The topics for this week, Festival of the Lost, let's get spoopy. An update from our PvP strike team, checkmate tuning changes, matchmaking changes in Crucible Control, talking about spawn tweaks, and more. Commemorating the crafting, and any sparrow is always on time. If you're brave enough, please tell me they finally fixed it. Player support report for an update on known issues and movie of the week, art of the week picks. All right. To whom it may concern, it's almost festival of the lost time. Break out those tricks and those treats, guardians. It's officially spectacular season. Festival of the lost is back next week with Space Grandma ready to dole out those sweets and celebrate all of our mask wearing shenanigans. For those itching to get into the Halloween inspired spirit, here's what you need to know about Festival of the Lost. We're really excited about a new addition this year that will make haunted sectors more rewarding when it comes to the experience itself and rewards that they offer. For the first time ever, we are introducing Legend Haunted Sectors. There's a lot of loot to snag, so let's break down what you can expect below. All right, so Eerie Ingrams, a new type of Ingram for 2023. Eerie Ingrams have two uses. Players can crack them open individually for some treats or use them as currencies for hocus focusing. Hocus focusing, which we'll get into below. Now, how to earn Eerie Ingrams. Eerie Ingrams will have a chance to drop upon completion of haunted sectors. Legend haunted sectors will have a higher chance of dropping Eerie Ingrams. Now, hocus focusing. Evan Levante has seen what Rao has been offering this season with exotic focusing and has decided that she'll offer her own spooky twist on the mechanic. During Fest with the Lost, Eva will also offer players opportunities to acquire exotic armor with four focusing categories in addition to the legendary weapons Eerie Ingram focusing. Now, weapons Eerie Ingram, festival weapons for a higher candy cost, exotic arms Eerie Ingram, exotic legs Eerie Ingram, exotic helmet Eerie Ingram, and exotic chest. Okay, so you're going to actually just build a flat out focus all exotic on top of the festival weapons, uh, which will write what it says right here, a higher candy cost. Now, Hocus Focusing Costs. It's, 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 say that like five times in a row, right? Focusing Types. Exotic Arms. One Eerie Ingram. 2,500 Candy Costs. Okay. Exotic Legs. One Eerie Ingram. 2,500 Candy. All right. Exotic Helmet. The same cost. Exotic Chest. The same cost. Randomize. Best for the Lost Weapon. One Eerie Ingram Cost. And 500 Candy. Now, a specific. So, targeting a specific uh, Best for the Lost Weapon. One Eerie Ingram and a thousand candy costs. Guys, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, as far as like acquiring candy, how much was a thousand candy? Like if you could equate a time frame, I vaguely remember getting somewhere around 250 candy for a strike. Yeah. I wonder if it scales per difficulty of the activity, right? It was pretty, pretty easy to get candy. Okay. Now special notes about Hocus Focusing. Players must own the expansion that the exotic armor is tied to in order for it to be eligible to drop from Hocus Focusing. Required expansions for each exotic armor piece are listed further below. The Forsaken pack counts toward the Forsaken expansion requirement. Players will not need to have acquired the exotic armor previously for it to be eligible to drop from Hocus Focusing. Now, this means players who are still missing exotic armor will have a chance to earn it from Hocus Focusing. Players will only receive exotic armor for the class that they are currently playing while interacting with hocus focusing dude look at this look at this drip look at that yeah, that looks pretty good we'll, we'll see how it works with shaders right now weapons eerie ingram heavy a cosmic grenade launcher the primary horror story auto rifle the energy jurassic green pulse rifle and the energy macabre sniper rifle so i don't even know what the roles are guys I mean, I, I, have they updated the roles for these weapons? I, I would assume horror story for sure, but like Jurassic and Macabre, have these been, have these roles been updated? Okay, here he is. Macabre season 22. Oh, 
Oh, all right. They have updated these roles. All right. So Macabre is one of the best sounding weapons in the game, guys. It's this sniper rifle right here. Uh, I guess the picture's not showing up for it. Hold on. It's not showing up. I don't know what's going on with LightGG, but it's got the best sound, man. It really does. Interestingly, you've got a couple traits that are going to make this a very good weapon. High ground on an aggressive frame. You're talking one shot, body shot kills, right? Uh, but even if you didn't want to go like the cheesy route, You've got keep away on this thing and opening shot. That's two different trait combinations to, to boost accuracy. Uh, and you can still do like an opening shot snapshot roll, which I'm pretty sure was on the last one from the previous year, right? And then even high impact reserves for some one shot body shot action, which you can accomplish with that as well. Okay, PV rolls. This is this is an arc weapon. So you've got you've got triple tap. You've got Vorpal. You've got clown cartridge are on, on here. You got volt shot as well was well, any current perk okay i think for pve players i would probably lean toward like a, a vorpal roll more than anything on this weapon and then we do know that we do know a sniper rifle buff is coming in the future by the way oh was there an origin trait too oh yes yeah, search party is going to be present on this weapon uh search party yeah the weapon is granted faster aim down, down sight speed and movement while aiming down sights when no allies are nearby so Considering that origin trait, guys, you may be able to get away with a keep away opening shot roll. As in, you, you may not need snapshot on this weapon if search party is going to fix that. You know, stack on targeting perks, which of course increases ADS time. And so if, if you can get away with it, you, you could have two different traits boosting accuracy and one also boosting or both boosting range. Now, let's take a look at Jurassic Green. These are the new trait combinations that you can get on it. Now, it has search party, but it also has build tested which is a good trait. The last year, I would say like golden tri... We did a golden tricorn roll. And because it's a solar weapon, we were able to run around and we would proc golden tricorn with like, I uh, was at Arthur's Embrace. And it would shred. It would definitely shred. But that is... It's not easy to proc. I do like keep away and head seeker. I think that on a rapid fire pulse, this is, this is fantastic. Matter of fact, let me take a look real quick at Oversoul. That's exactly what I use on Oversoul, guys. This is this is Oversoul ED. I think this is one of the best rapid fires in the game right now. But, I mean, it's enhanced Head Seeker and, and enhanced Keep Away. But Jurassic Green, you can get that same great combination here. And you could still have something like Search Party, which is going to help with that. You know, it, it ties into handling that ADS time, right? All right, so Horror Story this year, guys, it will have Nadir Focus, where Sustained Fire increases accuracy and range, also increases lunge distance for Swords, Projectile velocity for, for launchers. Listen, this is a 450 round per minute auto rifle. I know they're getting a range nerf next week. I think that 600 round per minute auto rifles are going to be the meta amongst auto rifles, but that's not saying that 450s won't still be good. There is some fantastic trait combinations on this thing. Dynamic sway, target lock, stack it with Nadir focus. I mean, you, you've got you've got accuracy, you've got damage getting pumped up, dude. There is some great stuff on this weapon. Uh, and even even things for PvE players out here that that you can lean on. And it is a stasis weapon, by the way, now. Um, and then this heavy, a cosmic grenade launcher. All right, so we don't actually see the look of the weapon, but it also has search, search party, nadir focus, rapid fire frame, and trait combinations. All right, you've got explosive line, you got clown cartridge, you know, you've got field prep. For my PvP play players, if you want an impulse amplifier roll, you could rock something like that interesting through high ground on here okay all right all right now exotic arms uh pretty much everything okay wow but he's just giving it giving an aeon swifts trick sleeves um cars grass shinobu's vow these are all the things you could target with eerie ingrams uh i guess they just decided to put literally every exotic on this and then also same with legs same with helmets i don't know if anything is left off this list guys i would imagine this is literally everything also, some some drip here. Look at that. I think it looks good, dude. I actually like this. I wonder if this could block, not necessarily block it, but could, could it mess with the sniper? You know what I mean? I got, I got some, some stuff by my head, you know? I'm like, think, imagine me like running away, especially if it shakes a little bit. It might mess with the sniper. Now, one more thing before we move on to what's coming up in PvP land. You like mementos? Do you like that slick new car black leather look? Then you're definitely going to enjoy the haunting new memento that will be dropping in Festival of the Lost this year for a limited time only. What? Just like usual, this memento is a random drop that will come in the form of an eerie Ingram. It won't begin immediately, but we're sure you'll 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 triumph over any challenges that may be between you and look at Snazzy as heck, or at the very least, 
snazzy as your loadout. All right. What? Bungie's given mementos? This is the first time Bungie has done this, guys. They are tying a memento to a holiday event. You know, we've got our gam or like our ritual mementos, right? Trials memento. But this is the first time Bungie is doing this. That's a big W. It's also time limited too. That means you're definitely going to want to jump in on this. A beautiful PvP strike team update. Checkmate, spawning, and more. Checkmate. Well, check. Matchmaking news. Check. More weapon focusing. Check it, check. We've got our latest PvP strike team update ready for those excellent guardian peepers. Starting with a new look at the feedback y'all offered up for things like checkmate, matchmaking, and more. Take it away, strike team. So checkmate. We heard you like checkmates. We want to make sure we get the tuning just right before it makes its way out of the Crucible Labs. So please bear with us as we plan on making frequent iterative changes to the modifier. Some of the changes you can expect to see soon. Hand cannons will three tap at any resilience. Rapid fire pulse rifles will three burst at six resilience. High impact pulse rifles will two burst at five resilience and reduce heavy ammo spawn frequency. We plan on running Checkmate in Crucible Labs for the remainder of the season, so expect to see Control and Survival coming back for Round 2. Wow, so this is... I mean, we're going to have to see what the what the damage pool is on that, or what the health pool is. But, I mean, we're, we're talking TTK values in line with what we currently have. I'm pretty sure they just mean 140 round per minute hand cannons and 120s, guys. All right, so let's... Bungie doesn't even remember that we have a 180 round per minute archetype. <laughs> now, we plan on running Checkmate and Crucible Labs for the remainder of the season, so expect to see Control and Survival coming back for round two. So, listen, guys. Bungie has, has made it very clear they love Checkmate. I think a lot of you also say you like Checkmate. And listen, I, I enjoy Checkmate. But also understand this, that there's some conflicting data because... Checkmate in comparison to regular Crucible is substantially better because of our lobbies. You know, you, you go play Control right now, you're getting slapped in the face with skill-based matchmaking. You know, you go Checkmate, you go play Checkmate, you don't have that. It's connection-based and it's, you know, it's a breath of fresh air. You're like, oh man, I can, I can try a couple of things. I can, I can play with a couple fun loadouts. I'm not having to sweat my butt off. I will say though, I do like the special, how, how the special economy works in Checkmate. I will be also putting out my full thoughts on Checkmate. We have played it extensively. We're going to continue playing it extensively, but those thoughts will be out this weekend. And I, I think there is a, a good middle ground here. I'm going to see how this plays out because once they introduce these changes, then we're talking like TTK values with what we have currently in the game. And there is a debate right now. Shouldn't we just have TTK values matching what we've been used to for years? but just move the special changes that we experience in Checkmate into the regular game, into the live game. Now, matchmaking. Speaking of frequent iterative changes, we are continuing to improve upon our matchmaking system. With the mid-season patch, we are compressing the skill band used for matchmaking in the control playlist. Think of it as reducing the number of divisions in the skill band. The result is that there are more players in each remaining division and therefore more players to match with, yielding quicker matchmaking times while continuing to recognize differences in skill level. With this change, the matchmaking experience for your first match or two will be out of sync as your skill gets remapped. We will be iterating on this into the next season. All right. So again, skill-based matchmaking, instead of having like 10 different ranks, you know, they're cutting down to five, you know what I mean? Which means there's there's a there's a, a bigger range in which you're going to be matched up against other players. Should equate to less sweaty matches for some, but uh, for others, you know, it could be a, a tad bit sweaty. All right, spawning. It is known that there are long outstanding issues with spawn, such as spawn traffic, spawn flipping, and not spawning at all. We've made a few changes in recent seasons, reverting some, went back to the drawing board, and here we are again, ready to take another stab at it. Iterations, it's a common thing. Previously, we made more systemic changes and less targeted changes. This time, we're doing the opposite, less systemic and more targeted. We're specifically looking to address issues on Altar of Flame and Cauldron. We don't expect to fix every issue, but if we succeed in resolving some of the more frustrating cases, we'll apply those lessons to other cases and maps. So this is a targeted approach. I would say with things like Cauldron, dude, if you just spawned us, like literally just moved us just a little bit behind that pillar on the outside. But, you know, with those maps and the way rotations worked, dude, especially like Alter, like those maps were originally designed for 4v4 and 6v6. You've got a wider spread of enemies. And that can result in you being present in both spawns. Like the whole team can be present in both spawns. And then the game has to decide where where are they going to put you. And so you, you'll find yourself spawning literally in, in the sideline of a sniper rifle. Next season, 
Things to look forward to in the following season. Crucible playlist reorganization, including a 3v3 rotator node. All right. Competitive crucible changes, including competitive weapon focusing, rank adjustment updates, and 3v3 countdown rush. Trials, flawed cards, rewards, rewards for win strengths less than seven. All right. So it's sentence for everybody there. More checkmate modes, Dominion and 3v3 clash, aka skirmish. Wow. Skirmish is making return. Dude, Bungie wants you to love it. They want us to love Checkmate. They want you to love it. Giving us Skirmish back. Oh my God. And they're throwing in Checkmate. Every sweaty PvP player is going to be like, oh yeah, I love Checkmate now. Now in loving-ish memory of the Kravnik, Halloween may be the most spectacular holiday of the fear, but the Kravnik sure did give our dev team a nice scare back in September. There was chaos, mayhem, exotics acting like legendary weapons, legendary weapons acting like exotics, and nothing in the world made a lick of sense during that week period. Who needs Frankenstein when you can become your own mad scientist at the Relic? And it's right! Perfection on the Twilight ride in the day. You Guardians were massive troopers while our team worked hard to get everything back into working order. And we're stoked to see the creativity many of you have when experimenting with this new world of possibilities. And who knows, maybe that week will inspire some fun shenanigans in the future. For the immediate future, however, we wanted to commemorate this wacky time in pure Bungie fashion with a new emblem. Everyone who played between September 15th at 9 a.m. Pacific and September the 21st at 10 a.m. Pacific will receive the emblem when it's ready to go in season 23. Here's a sneak peek. Oh my God. That is so perfect. Literally. Okay, so from the Enclave. It's got the same aesthetic from the Enclave. You got the question mark there, right? That's so good. That's a great emblem right there. Now, drive responsibly, Guardians. You don't got to get ready if you're born ready. Always on time is a beloved spell for a few reasons. But the primary one is its speed. There are so many other amazing vehicles to cruise around the galaxy in. So do you choose aesthetic or efficiency? Why not both? Beginning at season 23, we're making that need for speed universal across all sparrows after all you can't fight crime if you ain't cute and that absolutely applies to our handy dandy mode of transportation too. drive responsibility guardians chat it has finally happened our sparrow that we have been using season after season year after year always on time which don't get me wrong i'm happy it's a fast sparrow but there are so many other amazing sparrows i would love to use i simply use the sparrow because i know Less his sweaty ass won't take it off. And I'm sick of him getting through shit before me. I want to rock my mini sparrow, but you got these sweaty assholes that always want to rock always on time. So here I am having to rock it on all three characters. But now, now we can rock good look at sparrows. About damn time. Thank you, bunch. I'm glad you guys are finally doing this. Now, closing the chapter on groups. On November 14, 2001, groups, then known as chapters, were created to help foster a community throughout the years. Groups have been vitally important to Bungie.net, creating the first form for the website. However, for the past decade, group usage has slowly been decreasing to the point where we believe it's time to say goodbye to them. Within the past six months, out of the 5.1 million groups that have been created, only 65 were active with at least one post in them. Breaking that down further, only 16 were active in the past month. 10 of those had over 10 posts in them and only three broke over 100 posts. This decision did not come lightly. And we've been postponing it for several years. But with our website's future hosting multiple IPs, we must upgrade and begin the process of shutting down older features that no longer see usage. Over the next few months, groups will set, be set to read only to allow users to view ones they are a part of and save their memories before we fully shut them down. We don't currently have a firm timeline yet, but we once we do, we'll let you know. So groups, Jesus, man, I don't even remember. I'm pretty sure I was in a group. Didn't we have groups? Yeah, hold on, hold on. I, so, so I, I, am I thinking of the right thing? Because you could have, there was like groups for like people's YouTube channel and stuff, but it was like a hundred max, right? Like you could only have a hundred people in there. And I, we primarily used it back at D1. But, but, but listen, listen, I don't think any of us use, I mean, for Bungie to be closing this down, I don't blame them. None of us are actively using groups, right? All right, other known issues. Some weapons purchased from Banshee can have different mass work than what was displayed. The Osmosis perk is not successfully activating all weapons. The Ascension Major Arcana card buff is not applying scorch to enemies. Suppression or jolt effects can sometimes apply to allies 
and Savage Inspire. Wow. All right. Friendly fire there. Unearned exotic armor ornaments can sometimes show as available in the appearance screen, but cannot be equipped. Hive Swords will occasionally consume a player's alignment, but fail to be picked up in Crota's reprise. The Photonic Vest Hunter Chest Armor is currently unable to be transmogged. All right, guys. That is your twab for this past week. I like the emblem, man. Looks good. I'm excited about the weapons next week. I love that we're getting this memento. This is great stuff right here. Should be good, man. And, and on top of that, the exotic focusing, guys. I mean, dude, Bungie is literally just like, here, get whatever exotic you want. It's um, extremely plentiful. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.